Welcome. The love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I am Reverend T.J. Mack, and I am glad that you are here. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, Maine, a United Church of Christ denomination that welcomes all people into our hearts and into our midst. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Virtual worship is not the preference of most of us, but thank you for joining us. And thank you all who make this possible, this technological service, especially this morning, Mike Summer and Jennifer Ashmore, who's stepping in cold, no training. Even though we are worshiping online only, the work of our church continues. We will humbly and gratefully accept your gifts from you, the people of God, for this community, also the people of God. You can do that before, during, or after the service, mailed to the church or done virtually online through PayPal, through our Facebook page or through our website. If your envelope is going in the mail, goes to Union Congregational Church of Hancock, P.O. Box 443, Hancock, Maine, 04640. Betty Johnston, let me know we do have a birthday this week. Bill Reed is celebrating a birthday on the 10th. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big deal. Hi, Bill. Everybody send him a card, give him a call on Thursday or before. I bet he wouldn't mind any day. Thank you to all those of you that have already sent photos of your Advent wreaths or your Christmas trees or your home altars. Um, continue to do that. If you haven't already sent some photos, send them to Vicky or to myself and we'll include them in one of our Advent services. We do have a couple of upcoming services in addition to these Sunday morning services at 10 a.m. Thursday, December 17th at 7 p.m. we will have a blue Christmas service for those wanting to acknowledge their experiences of grief and loss and pain this time of year. So Thursday, December 17th at 7 p.m. that will be a Zoom service. Christmas Eve is Thursday, December 24th. That service will also be 7 p.m. It will be available on Facebook and YouTube. We will be on Zoom at 6 p.m. that night for fellowship. So join us at 6 o'clock, December 24th, for some holiday cheer before the 7 o'clock service. If you're interested in joining the church, we are going to bring new members in in one of our Sunday services in January. So please be in touch with myself or Vicki or any other deacon if you're interested in joining the church. There are other announcements in your bulletin or in your weekly messenger, please receive those. And at this point, let us center ourselves, prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Our call to worship is going to be led from home as well as from the sanctuary. Oh God, we light the second candle of Advent. We seek your comfort, tender, you come. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Isaiah announced God's coming to a people exiled in a broken and parched wilderness. He declared that God's redemption would make a highway in the desert and change the rough places into plain. God would come as a shepherd, feeding, leading, and cradling the weary flock. This Advent, we seek such a God. Saving God, look upon your world and heal your land. Prepare us to change. This Advent, teach us to be better and just as you are. Amen. Join me in the invocation. Mighty God, send your Holy Spirit to speak peace, that the good news of this age may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. Our invocation will be led by Kathy. Mighty God, send your Holy Spirit to speak peace. You're the good news of this age may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. Maybe, maybe you all heard Kathy, but we didn't. So we're going to do this in the sanctuary as well. Mighty God. Send your Holy Spirit to seek peace, that the good news of this age may be proclaimed through your word, which stands forever. Amen. And now you can join around for our children's message. I have a monitor. It looks like I have some Ashmores. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Lucy. And it's, it's Ava Bell out there. I can't, I can't see well enough, but... Okay. If you remember last week, last week we 
we talked about the first week of Advent. That's the light of stones, light that lives in seashells and crystals and in bones. And we put our sand dollar and our sea star and some rocks and crystals around our reef. And you may have done something at home also. This week, the second week of Advent, is the light of plants. Plants that reach up to the sun and in the breezes dance. So I don't know, do any of you have anything at home that you're going to add to your wreath that you want to hold up to your screen? Robin has, my eyes aren't that good. Robin has a pine cone, I think. Yes, awesome. And the wreaths are adding something and Amelia has a plant. Amelia and Lucy have a plant. Great. And here in the sanctuary, we have a couple things and anybody in the sanctuary is invited to come up I will add a holly branch with some berries on it. And these might be bigger than our wreaths, so we'll just set them around it or wherever. This looks like lichen. Pine cone. Thank you. And I'm just going to add one more big splash of red. I don't know what this is, but it's from a, a tree in the Lincolnville Camden area. Some nice red berries. So this week, if you haven't already, go this week if you haven't already, go ahead and find some plants and think of the plants and how they reach up to the sun and how good that feels when the sun does shine on you, when you get to turn your face up to the sun. That's what these plants do to grow, and it's it's so good for us. And I sure miss that this time of year. But every chance you get, get out there and stretch and grow and, and give praise for the sun. So our prayer this morning is, thank you, God, for plant life, for sunshine, for winds and rains and snow. We, your creation is good, all of it, and we thank you for it. Amen. Reading from the New Testament, from Mark, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there went out to him all the country of Judea and all the people of Jerusalem, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and had a leather girdle around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached saying, after me comes one who is mightier than I, the thong of his sandals, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit.
Please pray with me. O oh Lord, we know words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The beginning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. These words of Marx are profound in their simplicity, and they bring his listeners, or his readers, to a place of comfort and trust. They echo the words of the prophets of old, which his original audience was very familiar with. For me, his words conjured up Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, when, the God, when God created the heavens and the earth. Mark echoes the well-known beginning of the Hebrew Bible, words that his listeners and we are familiar with. Here we are, celebrating the second Sunday of Advent, trying to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child in our midst. How is the way prepared for us? Some commentators assert that the paragraph about preparing the way is written about John the Baptist making the way for Jesus. Some interpret as being written about Jesus making the way for us. Who is it about? You probably know what I'm going to say. Perhaps both things can be true. Let's bring this passage to life. Put yourself right in the middle of it. Who are you? Are you John, crying out to all who will hear? Repent, the Son of God is near. Wash away your sins, prepare your hearts. Listen to me. You think I am a prophet, but I am not worthy to stoop at the feet of the one who comes after me. John is a servant of God. John is humble. John cares not about appearances. Are you John? Are you one of the people from the, the Judean countryside or of the city of Jerusalem? Are you anxious to start a new life, to shed your past, to turn away from the flawed government power structures? How do you know who to trust? How do you trust yourself and your motivations? Have you come to start a new life with Christ, with God at the center? What beginnings are we on the threshold of? I invite you to share your answers, either out loud or in the chat box, or to ponder the question throughout the week. What beginnings are we on the cusp of? Advent is the beginning of the church year. It is our chance to prepare the way for ourselves, to make room in our own hearts for God. Baptism prepares us for our life in faith. Baptism is not the culmination of our relationship with God or with Jesus. It is the beginning and only the beginning. We are baptized into life with Christ through the Holy Spirit, and then we must continue to find our way on the path each and every day of our lives. How does one do that? John the Baptist proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, a cleansing of one's heart, a turning away from what separates one from God, a turning toward the way that Jesus prepared, a turning toward God. John the baptizer was beginning a new thing. John's baptisms were outdoors, in flowing waters, under the dome of sky. John's baptisms, like John himself, had an element of wilderness and unpredictability in them, like those that came to him from city and country alike, like us. The prophets of old prepared the way for John the baptizer, who prepared the way for Jesus, who through the Holy Spirit 
prepared the way for us. Those are beginnings, beginnings that know no end, if you are like me anyway. We turn toward God, we ask for forgiveness, we repent, and then we repeat. We are not meant to be perfect, although we are meant to try to please God. Each day is a new beginning. How will we convey the good news of Jesus Christ? Will we be silent? Or will we cry out? Will the good news stop with us? Or will we prepare the way for others? Prepare the way. This is only the beginning. Mark's Gospel is often criticized for its incomplete ending. Mark ended his Gospel abruptly. After Jesus' death, after the women found that Jesus was missing from the tomb, Mark writes that they were terrified and told no one. The end. Mark's original ending was so disconcerting that it was modified twice by others to include descriptions of the women telling what they saw and to include appearances by Jesus before he was taken up to heaven. Scholars are finally acknowledging that maybe Mark's intention, this, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, it is, it was, only the beginning. In fact, some scholars believe that what Mark wanted was for us to go back to the beginning after reading the end. You know, like you do when you finish a good mystery novel. Go back and reread the beginning and maybe the middle, maybe all the way through again, with a new perspective, a new understanding, with yourself placed in the story. This morning, Jean read from the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. It was only the beginning, the beginning of what still continues 2,000 years later. It is the story that has no ending. I will close with the fourth verse of Amazing Grace. When we've been here 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise as when we've just begun. Amen. I invite you now to quiet your minds and your hearts, open them to the love of God, and allow that love to move freely through you and through us all. That love will hold us, our joys and our hopes and our concerns and our fears. Our God is present and always listening. Again, this Zoom is new to us, but you can type your prayers in the chat, or um, if you can get our attention, we'll try to take your prayers. Joys for recoveries of all sorts, physical, emotional, mental, joys for recoveries. concerns for this community and all of these communities that worship with us, that we be present to one another, that we help one another through each day and each night. Sometimes the nights are harder, aren't they? We pray especially for those that live alone or are feeling isolated. We pray for all affected by COVID-19. That is basically each and every one of us. Vicki says prayers for my cousin Daryl. Prayers for Vicki's cousin Daryl.
prayers for those struggling with addiction. Prayers for Sheila in State College. Prayers for Sarah, a cousin in Texas who's just been diagnosed with cancer. Prayers for those with COVID-19 and their families. Prayers for the healthcare workers and all the public health professionals who are battling this against opposition sometimes too strong to understand. And thanks that we're so close to a vaccine. Yes. I'm wondering if we should, um, well, I, I don't know how to let the church know that they don't, aren't on the feed anymore. Um, I had a note that TJ left, whatever that means. No, it, it, the, the, um, the screen is, is, was frozen and now it's, she, she's, she's lost her, um, right. place in this Zoom. So I'm not sure about what we should do about that. Um, try calling her on her cell phone. Hmm. Okay, I'll try that. I also texted what, Jen, but. What about, oh yeah, our calling Pat. Does Vicki know? Yes, I do, Fran. Where are you in the service? I just got here. Praying for people. Where it looks we're, like Jen's got the audio back at the church. We're frozen, Jack. We we don't have a church feed. They went away. I see that. Can you see can you see Jen on TJ's feed? It looks yeah. like she's trying to fix it. I see Lucy on Jennifer's feed. <laughs> I, I think the children are home, I think. Yeah. And Asa. Things are moving now at the church. 
Kathy and Ron, you now say TJ Mac on your screen. <laughs> yeah. The church is still muted, though, so then. And I'm saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Ooh. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread, eating this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. This is the camera right now. It's not. Okay. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives us. The gifts of God for the people of God. The bread of life. Take and eat. The cup of blessing. Please join me in our Thanksgiving prayer. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, increase our love, Father, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
may heaven's peace be in your hearts this day, this week, and always. The way is prepared. Go, be on your way. Thank you.